join the conversation. Well, how would you feel if our publicly owned parks and forests became private property? It could mean you couldn't hike, camp or hunt in your favourite parks around Gippsland, depending on the discretion of the landowner. But Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm thinks it'll be better for the environment and it'll make it easier for people to hunt without restrictions. Senator David Lionhelm is the leader of the Liberal Democrats in New South Wales and joins us on ABC Gippsland this morning. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Why do you want to privatise government-owned parks and forests? Well, uh, in, the, in the long run, private property is looked after better than publicly owned property. So if we want to preserve the environmental values in uh, those areas which are now uh, state parks or national parks, um, they are more likely to be maintained, they're likely to be looked after if they are part of private property. Um, we see examples of national parks being um, owned privately elsewhere in the world, including in the UK. Well, nearly all the national parks in the UK are privately owned. The environmental values that they seek to maintain are identified and the owners are very, um, are very keen, in fact, on maintaining those environmental values. It's not a matter of locking people out unless allowing large numbers of people into a park threatens those environmental values. But if you look at um, anything that's privately owned, it's almost impossible for it to become extinct or to be eradicated or, or, um, or lost to, to society um, uh, when you make it uh, privately owned. When it's uh, publicly owned, nobody owns it, basically. And uh, so there's nobody there who says, no, you can't, you can't uh, keep using that resource it's, uh, because it's all going to disappear and I won't have anything. Um, that, that's the benefit of private property. The Woolamai Pine is a very good example. It was thought to be extinct. Um, then it was found um, and it was in danger and it could have become extinct if there had been a fire through the area it was found. So it was um, uh, reproduced, uh, turned into private property. You can now buy it and put it in your garden or in a pot on your balcony or wherever. There's absolutely no chance that the Woolamai Pine will now be ex become extinct and uh, that, that's a very good example of how private property works. Senator David Lionhelm is my guest on ABC Gippsland this morning. Senator, you mentioned um, the UK before. There's cases overseas where you know beautiful natural assets are privately owned, and their commercialism has ruined the natural beauty of the place. You know, with food stalls and and fancy accommodation. What's your response to that? Yes, there is that risk. Um, although that risk also applies when it's publicly owned, so that it's not exclusive to private property. It can occur under any circumstances. But uh, it's, it's much more likely that it won't occur in private property because the reason that people want to come and see um, a park is because of its environmental values. Uh, if, if an owner degrades those environmental values by excessive commercialisation, um, then people won't want to come and see it anymore. So I, I think the, you know, nothing will guarantee um, preservation of any environment under any, any system, but I think the chances overall are substantially better if it's privately owned. Do you think the level of deterrence, though, um, you know, in stopping people from doing the wrong thing, do you think that level of deterrence will drop if it goes from being government-owned to privately owned? No, I think the other way around. The, uh, the owner has a, a, an incentive to preserve those values and so will go to more trouble to, uh, to ensure they're protected. You see that the difference between publicly owned caravan parks and privately owned caravan parks. The privately owned caravan parks are almost inevitably better looked after, um, better maintained and there's more uh, policing, if you like, of, uh, of uh, care rules that, uh, that are applied to it. So in publicly owned caravan parks, you know, the, the, the caretakers or whatever are quite often not on site. Um, they're, um, they're effectively public servants. They work two hours and uh, their care is, um, is substantially less. So I think, um, as I said, nothing is absolute black and white guaranteed, but I think in the long run um, private, private property and private owners and private care is more likely to maintain uh, environmental values than any other approach. And uh, as I said, we do see that in the UK. The, the national parks there are privately owned. 
the owners of them are very, very mindful of the environmental values they're meant to maintain. I did a, a substantial tour there uh, several years ago and spoke to a number of their owners, and uh, there's absolutely no question that uh, they regard this as their, uh, their uh, national duty to protect uh, environmental values. You're still putting a lot of trust, though, in those people if it is privately owned to, to do the right thing. I mean, there are lots of rules and protections for state and national parks, which might not be the case if they become privately owned. I guess it just depends on, on that owner and, and, their, and their thoughts to that. Wouldn't this be detrimental to the environment and animals? No, other way around. Um, if you don't put your, plan, your faith in uh, private owners, you've got to put your faith in the government and public servants. And um, um, I see a lot of government... Uh, a lot of government and a lot of public servants in um, in my role as a senator, and I have to say uh, my faith in them is not all that high. Um, I have uh, much greater faith in somebody who has an ownership right in property and who will say, well, this is mine. Um, I don't want you to uh, damage it, harm it, uh, uh, undermine its uh, environmental values. And, of course, those environmental values can be publicly discussed and agreed and specified in the terms of, uh, of ownership. So, you know, you can say, um, the community can say via the government, via an agreement of some description, um, there is a limit to what you can do to it because these environmental values must be maintained. And uh, uh, so th there are various ways in which uh, uh, the public can have a say, but at the end of the day, the owner has a greater um, interest in preserving the private property than, than the public does. You, you, you know, uh, if, if everybody owns it, effectively nobody owns it. You're saying the owner cares more than, you know, if it's public land, so if the government owns it. Instead of having private um, public land or the national park become privately owned, what about calling for the government to better manage the land rather than going straight to be making it private? Well, that that's, happens all the time, and uh, hunters and, um, and others who use uh, uh, private, uh, public property at the moment quite often say that. It, it's a matter of resources at the end of the day. I mean, you've, you've got only so much uh, taxpayers' money to go around. There are huge national parks and state parks to be managed. Um, you know, even with the best will in the world, and even if all of the public servants who are responsible for looking after these areas are committed and work hard and and uh, don't uh, uh, you know don't go slack or anything like that, even with all of those things working in your favour, it is still a very large area of of uh, land to be looked after. And frankly, you know, we wouldn't want to pay the taxes necessary to um, uh, to watch it every minute of the day all all, all year round. Whereas a private owner, uh, they're spending their own time, their own money, their own resources to look after it. It's not costing the taxpayer anything, and uh, they have an interest in preserving its value. Um, so you will get a substantially higher um, uh, interest in, uh, in looking after it than you will if it's publicly owned. Thanks for your time this morning, Senator. My pleasure. That's Liberal Senator David Lionhelm, leader of the Liberal Democrats in New South Wales.